Welcome back to Brave Birds DFS, one of the best places for PGA, NFL, MLB, and NBA news, and of course DFS. If you don't know by now, I'm Walt. If you haven't already, please like and subscribe to my channel. Man, it is the best day in Atlanta Hawks history, and Hawks, I just have one bit of advice for you. Don't talk to anyone from the Falcons draft room. Don't overthink this. Pick the best player and let's win some games. All right, for you non-Falcons fans and non-Hawks fans, let's jump into this analysis. So we have Boston going to Cleveland, playing at seven o'clock on Monday, and we have OKC going to Dallas, playing at 9.30 on Monday. So this is a repeat of a, you know, a slate from two days ago. So let's pull up that slate and see what we can garner and gain from this so we can have a better chance of winning that guap on Monday. All right, so in the point guard position, no surprise, we have Shea Gilders-Alexander. So I feel like Gilders-Alexander is like Brunson before he was injured. Like unless something crazy like that happens or just some kind of uh, in severe foul trouble, he's almost, you know, a must start and I hate saying that because I, I, I'm, I'm gonna jinx him but I mean he returned seven times value just uh not a lot of not didn't take a brain surgeon to know that Gilgis Alexander was going to be a good look he got all those points in a loss same thing with Mitchell Mitchell has been on one for the past four games 8900 so you saved uh 700 from him and he returned look six times it's about six times value so another player that I wouldn't mind going back to Tim Hardaway I mean wow Wow, Tim Hardaway made the uh, the winning lineup, and it was a very low scoring slate. We can see that the winning uh, lineup had 307.5 points on the main GPP. So yeah, Tim Hardaway is back in 15 points. Uh, you know, got him in there. Didn't even return five times value, but you know we can jump ahead and see that Pritchard only returned three times value. So very interesting slate. I don't know if I go back to Hardaway, but I can see why people might want to go back to Pritchard. And then Jason Tatum had his best game from a DFS perspective of the entire playoffs. Uh, then PJ Washington back to back good games, uh, returned what six plus times value. Uh, the the Dallas uh, from a DFS perspective, the Dallas centers and power forwards have just been having their way with OKC. And then Isaiah Joe. So I'm going to keep saying it. I don't have a crystal ball, but I can promise you this. You have four super value players for the Thunder that are always in contention to make the winning lineup. You have Isaiah Joe, you have Wallace, you have Jay Williams, and who's the um and you have Wiggins. So one of those, one of those uh four players is going to make uh the winning lineup. It just seems like it's gonna happen. Who's it gonna be? But they have a very interesting rotation, and they have those four players that are under four thousand that can get you about, as you can see with Isaiah Joe, 21. 20 to 25, you know, fantasy points. And then you had Holiday playing like he played back when he played for the Bucks. I feel like this is an outlier game, but for the 20% of people that believed in him and he was the difference maker, good for you all. All right, so let's go to DraftKings. Let's look at the super studs, and we have five super studs to choose from. So my first super stud is going to be Donovan Mitchell. I'm going back to him. His salary went up by $100. We're going to get his game logs and see that his lowest game, his quote unquote worst game was when he scored 50 fantasy points uh, the first game of the series. So he's going to be in Cleveland. The, clouds, the crowd <laughs> and the clouds are going to be behind him. So there's no reason why he can't continue on this same rate he's been doing recently. Then I'm going to go a little different with Kyrie Irving. Uh, so Kyrie... His salary has dropped $600, so that's one of the reasons I like him. And he's been relatively consistent uh, as far as from a DFS perspective for someone who's 8,300. He's getting the minutes he's on. The, he's been on the floor 41 minutes back-to-back -back games. So I like taking the risk and going with Kyrie over Luka. We can look at Luka. We know Luka has a lot of elements right now. Don't necessarily have a problem with him minus the salary. Jason Tatum, I really feel like that was a ceiling game for him. I think he'll probably regress back into the 40s or or 50s. I mean, he, I mean, he's a he's a superstar. So we know we saw that he can get into the 60s, but that isn't the norm for him. And who's the other super stud? That everybody? Uh, yeah, those are the yeah five super studs. So and studs, excuse me. So let's go on to the mid range and like Jalen Williams. I like the minutes. I like the consistency. He stayed in the range between thirty five and forty five fantasy points. So if he can do that again at seventy five hundred, going to really help your lineup. 
and then I'm going with Darius Garland. So you have 6,200. I really like that salary. It's gone down. So it's kind of gone up and down, but definitely since early in the month, it's gone down by 300. I like I like the energy. He's on the floor. He's trying to do a little bit of everything, getting assists, getting double digit points. Uh, he hasn't blown the roof off any game yet, but I mean, I feel like this is a game where it has the potential for him to do that. We can look at the other players that are in uh, the mid range. I like Jalen Brown. Definitely like Mobley, especially if Allen doesn't return. I like Holgrim. I like White. <clears throat> so I really like the mid range. All right. Let's move on to the value, and I'm sticking to the board of the value in P.J. Washington. He's had back-to-back, -back, you know, smash games. His salary has gone up some. I don't know if he's going to get 58 points, but definitely this matchup is good for him. So I can see him getting between 35 and 45 points at 6,000. And then we have Karis LeVert. I mean, 4,600. Salary has barely gone up, and he's his minutes have gone up from 26 to 27 to 30 minutes. So Cleveland has continued to lean on him, and we're getting a steal of a deal at 4,600. We can look at the other value players. I don't see Holiday repeating, but you never know. Uh, I mean, Gaffer, he's, his minutes have not been, you know, impressive to me. I mean, I think he's back. He got only 20 minutes last game. Yeah, so he hasn't, you know, gone past 27 minutes. They have a lot of options at power four and center. Um, but I mean, he he's someone that can obviously average well over a fancy point per minute, but it's just hard to tell when it's going to be that game. I've really been disappointed in Horford. I mean, uh, he's had a lot of opportunities. He was on the floor for 39 minutes last game and only scored 13.75 fantasy points. So, I mean, someone on the floor that much with a salary of 5,400, I mean, you kind of want to pause on him, but I don't know, man. It's just been really disappointing. Then you have Struess, you know, we know Matt Struess every Every three to five games, he's going to do something, you know, above his uh, what you would expect. Dort, another person that's on the floor a lot and every once in a while will have a good game. But I mean, 40 minutes and 19.75 uh, fantasy points he's had. He did have the game against the Pelicans where he got 30 fantasy points. But the way the rotation has been going and his usage has just, you know, been a little bit disappointing as well. And then we have Lively. And then, of course, everybody's favorite value player is Pritchard. All right, so once again, I said it's going to be one of these four players uh, for the Thunder as far as super value, and I'm going with Aaron, uh, Aaron Wiggins. Uh, we can see the minutes have been over 20 every game in this series, so I really like that. The points have been, you know, he had the 29.75 point game, but if you're on the floor for 20 to 22 minutes and you're only 3,900, anything can happen. And if Allen doesn't come back, I like, I think we all like what we saw from, from Wade. Uh, so if Allen's not back, I mean, you got to at least consider him the way his usage and how he played in limited minutes against Boston two games ago. So we can look at the other super value players, Okoro. I mean, we know he's your low usage. Hey, Hardaway made the winning lineup. You never know, right? Uh, Cornette, that's going to be interesting to see whether he actually, he says probable, but if he obviously doesn't play, that opens up some minutes for Tillman. Uh, we know Isaiah Joe made the winning lineup. We talked about Wade Hauser. I mean, he's just, they haven't really used him much in this series. That especially is hilarious after he had his uh, ceiling game. He's had nothing but dud games uh, since. Uh, we have Josh Green. Uh, he's getting the minutes, but he's not converting them into actually real life points or fantasy points. And we know Wallace and Williams are always live to actually make uh, the winning lineup. So let me know your thoughts. Feel free to leave any comments or questions, but otherwise go out there and win that guap.